man! You gotta beat the man! This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes! Where is he? Cactus Jack! Your arms are just too short to box with God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Few True Heels podcast. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hotter. I am Brian Brian Peacock. We lost Coach Brooks. <laughs> It's Super Bowl Sunday. It so. is Super Bowl Sunday. He said he was going to be sleeping, though. Yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> I'll be playing Destiny 2 later. I will that, be that's going to be my Super Bowl. Napping. I've had a very busy weekend so far. Yeah, you'll actually have an evening off for Sunday. Yeah. We're recording this much earlier. Yes. This will be going up much earlier. I'll probably get it done at my dad's house. There you go. You guys can hear us. Earlier. Yay, because that's what people were asking for. Yep. Every one of you. Every <laughs> one. Not every one. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You're not funny. Oh, uh, I am funny. <laughs> do you want to show the kids your new talent? Oh, do you want me to? Can you do a wrestling song? Uh, no. No, I'm terrible at it. has got to be something you can do. Do Stone Cold. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Uh, there, there you go. go. Still cold. I got wooden flutes. <laughs> that would be for another podcast, really. I was about Just to say, let you go on the other one. Future Villains podcast. You can talk about your, your musical obsession all of a sudden. It just kind of happened. Paul and Brian. I've, I've always... What's that? Paul and Brian. Yep. Go ahead. Go I'm, deep into something without knowing anything. <laughs> I've always played music, though. I have, I have always played music, so... It's not At least played music. sound. Oh, no. <laughs> I've been in a couple other... like I've been in bands and stuff, too, so I have played music. Like, I play guitar and everything, so... But, yeah. I figure this is... If you want to know about his drumming, go listen to the, not the Amp Guard podcast. The, no, it wasn't it the Amp Guard one. No, it was nope. the Thalian Door. Right. Which is still weird for me to say it that way. And the Dagger Here podcast. You talked about your drumming there. Oh, yeah. Talked about But if you want to hear it, it's not. Right. Watch the Thalian Door recap video. Yeah. Which is on the Future Villains YouTube channel. But uh, for now, we're going to talk about wrestling. Yep, because that's this podcast. There's quite a few things on the docket today. We're going to talk about the Cruiserweights, uh, some NXT news, some Ring of Honor news, uh, some Bray Wyatt and Mother's news. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, first of all, we're going to talk about WWE's doing another Cruiserweight title tournament. And that's exciting. Is that how they're going to decide who gets the belt now? Yes. Oh. Uh. So just like they just did with the U.S. Championship, they're doing with the Cruiserweight Championship. Which, I don't mind tournaments. I know right. some people are kind of like, oh, too many tournaments. But these yeah. are also part of the same people that were like, I miss King of the Ring. Right. Which, King of the Ring is more important, but tournaments are also fun. Yeah, this is a, it's supposed to be a sport. Right. And sports have tournaments. Yeah. And uh, the new GM of said tournament is... A uh, new guy named Drake Maverick. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, I don't know who this guy is. Formerly known as Rockstar Spud. Yeah, you told me that, and I'm like, I don't know who that guy is. He's great. <laughs> He's great, great promos. He's a TNA guy. Uh, I'm excited for it, because like, I, I enjoyed him in TNA. What well, little bit I saw over there. Right. Because, um, you know, obviously I'm not a TNA fan. That's pretty well known. <laughs> But I did enjoy Rockstar Spud, EC3. So, you know, the guys I enjoyed over there are now in WWE, which is awesome. But uh, they even said when they when Drake came out, the announcers were like, oh, formerly Rockstar Spud. I'm like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> Surprised the hell out of me, but they didn't say TNA. Right. But uh, we pretty much know all the competitors for this tournament, which is kind of disappointing considering how exciting the last Cruiserweight tournament was. Yeah. So, uh, it's pretty much just going to be the guys from the roster as far as we know. But it would be nice if we got, like, Aleister Black 
or Ricochet or yeah. Oni Lorcan, Johnny Gargano. I would, there would be some really good people to put in the tournament, but then you would have to take out the guys who kind of deserve to be there because they're on the show. But, yeah, I'm sure there's a couple people that you do that with. Yeah. Very, pretty exciting, nonetheless. You know, uh, they want 205 Live to be an important show, but they just keep kind of putting on decent matches. And they need to do something different. Yeah, and it's de- it has the potential. Oh, hell yeah. It has some of the best performers. Um, hands down. Why it's not bigger. Maybe because we don't watch it. <laughs> well, they also, they don't give a reason to watch it. I've watched it, and the, the matches have been, like, good. Right. But, you know, I, I enjoy storytelling in my wrestling. Yeah. I like some story to it, some reason for the matches. You know, exhibition matches can only be so exciting. Unless it's like a Cody Rhodes versus Kenny Omega, which is just an exhibition match, I believe, which is going to be at the the next big Ring of Honor show. Right. But that's two big powerhouses coming together for an exhibition match. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Mustafa Ali versus, uh, oh my God, uh, Brian Kendrick is only so exciting so many times. Right. So they got to do something different. Hopefully they will. Uh, Drake Maverick. Shoot. Put Drake Maverick in the tournament. That would be pretty cool. This is a good opportunity for them to expand the roster as well. That's what they need to do. <coughs> you know, I don't want to see guys left out. But at the same time, they've kind of had their shot. Right. That a little sense. bit. Yeah. It's also not necessarily their fault. It might be the writer's fault. It's... Who the hell knows? I don't understand why they don't just replace 205 Live with NXT. In some way. Yeah. Because NXT is so damn good. And that is... That's not even a lot of exhibition matches. That's a lot of story stuff. But the NXT stories are just pretty basic. It's like... Sanity attacked... uh, Undisputed. They don't like each other. They've got this long building rivalry... And that's pretty much the story there, and it was still super exciting when they went at it, because those are all guys that we really care about, and... Yeah. It's just the way that they present it. It can't be like, you two fight. Right. Because that's what it feels like at 205 Live. It's like, you two, go at it. Yeah, I think... Uh, I forget what their name is, but I think they're out of Orlando. The a company that... They have, it, like, rankings and everything. I know right. I've said it before, but I think that's... Something that should be adopted. It is on SmackDown now. Oh, really? They have a top ten on SmackDown. I couldn't find that news story, but yeah, Daniel Bryan announced that there will be a SmackDown top ten. Like a ranking system. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Hopefully, I, I guess that will probably be next week. I don't think it started this week, but I could be wrong about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, next little bit of news is uh, Reby Hardy has announced that the broken gimmick is officially over. And, uh, I guess they won. The gimmick is over, or the... The the trademark battles. Or, yeah. Yeah, so they won the trademark battle. So we might be getting broken Matt Hardy very soon. A big what part of that... What is he now, then? Woken. And he said that he might have to go back to his broken origins. Oh. Um. Oh my god, what is that guy's name from TNA that just went what's it over to Dota B? Uh, Rockstar Spot. No. <laughs> uh, oh no. Talk, Brian. Talk. Uh, the EC3 guy is that? Who no, it it's some. It's not a wrestler. Oh. Oh, Jeremy Borash. Jeremy Borash. Thank you. Good lord. Jeremy Borash was apparently a huge part of building the Broken Universe in TNA. Ah, okay. He's also just a fantastic personality. And, you know, from what I understand and what it seems to be, he's a fantastic person. He's <laughs> super way. nice dude. Um, he really was kind of the face, or at the very least, the voice of TNA for, like, forever. Yeah. And I, when I watched it. Now he's in WWE. It was Ooh. pretty exciting. Way to fuck up again, TNA. 
Why don't they just treat these guys better? Maybe. No, just maybe. TNA is just doing enough to stay afloat. And then one day, they're going to be like, all right, guys, now let's get serious about it. And then they're just going to blow everything out of the water. That happens every year. They're like, this is it, guys. That's what's happening right now. They're like, Austin Aries is our champion. This is the time to get serious. We got Ohio versus everything. We got Eli Drake. We got Austin Aries. We got all this this huge talent, this indie pool that we're going to pull from. And this is our time. And they end up not paying up or something dumb. Literally not paying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we'll see. I don't know. I kind of want to watch Austin Aries match. I can't. But I also don't want to support TNA, GFW, <laughs> fuck that owl. Whatever the hell they call themselves now. I don't know why they can't just stick to a name. There's nothing wrong with Impact Wrestling. TNA, anytime I say that to anyone, they're like tits and ass. Well, I think that's kind of what they were getting at to begin with. I think so, yeah. That's why they should just drop that name. I mean, do you, do you remember their, when they started? Oh, yeah. It was tits and ass. Yeah, they had the cage dancers. You could only watch oh, it yeah. on pay-per-view. And... But, you know, get away from that. They don't have to, it doesn't have to stay there. But instead, they just, I don't know. TNA pisses me off. <laughs> they, need to, uh, they need to get better and come back to Orlando and just do... Keep doing their free shows in Orlando every week. So yeah, and we, go we, to sh- those. we should go to them. <laughs> and that's kind of sad that they're free. I went to one and there was like no one there. They just did one a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And apparently they had a media mayhem match. I don't know what that involved. Oh, yeah, you told me about that. Yeah. They had people from the radio show I listened to in the morning. And I'm not did sure they wrestle? Else. I don't know. The guy, the host for the Monsters in the Morning, I guess he has a wrestling background. Well, they had a wrestling promotion, right? You yeah, have? They, they they did a handful of shows. I don't know if they're still do. I don't think they're still doing them. They probably do them occasionally or something. Yeah, but I don't know. And Mark Marrow's on their show a lot. Okay, so that helps. So just to get away from TNA and do polar opposite. Uh, they are going to have uh, the NXT TakeOver New Orleans, which, you know, obviously, night before WrestleMania, that would be exciting as hell. Uh, I might have to try and get a few hours off just to come over here and watch that live. Maybe we'll do a live reaction to that, and then we'll do pay-per-view and wrestling next day, WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Because that TakeOver up. show is going to be badass. Probably. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. And if you want to do a live reaction show, Brooks isn't here, but he would be losing his mind right now because that's what he wants to do so bad. It'd be fun. Yeah. If there was ever one to do it, it's going to be TakeOver and it's going to be WrestleMania. Yep. So absolutely. Uh, but we've already got some matches for it. It's most likely going to be Aleister Black versus Andrade Cien Almos, the NXT Championship. Yeah. That's going to be intense. Man, I know, I know you love Aleister Black, yeah. and I one thousand percent agree that he deserves to be NXT champion. Yeah, but boy, do I kind of want Andrade to beat him. No, nope. I don't think it's gonna happen. I am such an Andrade fan now. He's yeah. so damn good. I need to go back and watch his stuff from AAA or whatever it was. CML. CML. Thank yep. you. Because yeah, he's he's so damn good. That Hammerlock DDT is one of my favorite finishers right now. Yeah, it is pretty brutal. Especially the, they call it a draping, a Hammerlock DDT, like what he did to Johnny Gargano. Mm-hmm. I've always known that as a hanging, but I guess it's a hanging, draping, whatever. It's kind of the same thing. It is. It's, I've never heard it. They said draping, and I was like, what? Like, <laughs> Morrow may have said it, so it's right. probably right. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, Michael Cole probably calls it hanging. Um, we'll get the finals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Tournament. Uh, we know so far it's the authors of Pain, Street Fo- Profits, and Sanity have advanced. 
Um, TM61 Heavy Machinery and Tino Sabatelli and Riddick Moss are already out. Uh, let's see. Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake have a first round match against undisclosed opponents. And huh. possibly War Machine may enter. Oh, man. Boy, do I want. Oh, I don't know. War Machine versus AOP or War Machine versus Sanity? War Machine I know versus you're not Sanity. an AOP fan. No. <laughs> They're much, they've become much, much better. They're better, but they're still still not as good as they should be. War Machine vs. Sandy is super exciting. <clears throat> I don't I haven't really caught up on Street Profits. I know like they're pretty good. Yeah, they're they're okay. They're probably not ready for something like this yet. No. But I do like to see that they are progressing. Uh I would have preferred that TM sixty one progress, even though their name is garbage. Right. Um, which we talked about earlier, and they even said in a promo, the Mighty Don't Kneel, just fucking call yourselves the Mighty Don't Kneel. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it with this TM61 thing. Yeah, we don't get it. I, I just in America, we Australian don't get it. Australian Area Code or something, I guess? It's a, it's a terrible name. It's like, almost like they're trying to copy uh, Rey Mysterio 619, but Rey Mysterio also doesn't call himself 619. Right. Yeah, it would be the same thing. It'd be like Rey Mysterio calling himself, "I am the six one nine. Yeah, it's just weird. We'll also get a rematch of Ember Moon versus Shayna Baszler, maybe in a submission match. Oh, could be. <laughs> Which Ember Moon would be kind of dumb to do that. I feel like. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we'd see that. I don't. I don't think that would happen. And maybe we'll get, like, a, a last woman standing, or we'll probably get some kind of sim- simulation, stipulation match, because this is getting to be a very, this was a very, very heated feud at the last show. Right. So this one's got to be the blow-off match, and it's got to be something nasty. Yeah. But it's also, like, a championship match right before WrestleMania. Yeah. <clears throat> they might want to keep it, you know, pure for competition's sake. Competition was an air quotes. Competition you know, against WrestleMania? Case. Well, no, just... Because in stipulation matches, especially like the submission thing, they can be kind of fucky. Yeah. I don't know, that might be what you need, though, to keep people talking. Maybe? We'll see. Uh, regardless, I'm super excited for that match because they delivered at the last NXT pay-per-view. Which, right. again, you know, we didn't talk about on the last show, but briefly because you should really go watch that because it is amazing. Um, the next match we'll get pretty much for sure is Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano. And this... I don't know. You don't know if we'll get it? Not right away. We'll get it at the TakeOver. This has been a long time building. Yeah, we still have a few months for that, right? We have April. Yeah. So February, yeah, March, yeah, we'll probably get it then. Yeah, because they'll build up. Because that, that's the weird thing about NXT is they film like, what, once a month? I think so. They've already filmed for this month or this coming month. That's how we know about these uh, spoilers. Yeah. We should try to get to one of those shows. But it's impossible to get tickets. No, it's it, it's apparently pretty possible. We know people that can get tickets. We know people who say they can get tickets. I know people who go. Okay. And I see the pictures. I'll believe it as soon as we get the tickets. You know, they can get tickets. They can get us tickets. Hopefully. If I'm just like, here's the money, get us a ticket. Yeah. And I know they don't listen to the show because they've asked me dumb questions that they would know if they listen to the show. <laughs> Calling them out. Yep. On the show they don't listen to. So if you're listening, nope. And you know who you are. Comment below. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Even if you don't think you are who that is, do that. Yeah. If you're not that person, still. Like, Speaking comment, of subscribe. subscribing, segue to YouTube. <laughs> That's not the segue I would have went to, but okay. 
Well, we're going to talk about YouTube things. I would have talked about the subscription thing. Talking about subscribing. You have to subscribe to things on YouTube. That's yeah. why it's a segue. Uh, yeah, I get it. But a we'll better talk about segue the subscribe thing would, later. Yeah, that would have been a better segue. Don't talk about my segues. Segways They're are smooth. expensive. You know that one was cheap. Do you know how much a Segway costs, by the way? Thousands. Like 8000 yeah. $8,000 for a fucking Segway. It's ridiculous. Yeah. My car was 6000 So. To get one of my teeth fixed is going to be 2000 so Not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to happen. You can, get, you can get your tooth fixed. Or keep saving up and get yourself a Segway. Or I can get all the teeth fixed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, money doesn't make any sense. You know what does make sense? You know what does definitely make sense? Because this makes me happy. That's why we're time. bringing the YouTube thing up. So people are fucking stoked for Ronda Rousey. Right. If anything in the media is to be believed. This is the biggest news ever. As of... Let's see... As of January 29th, apparently, the Ronda Rousey clip on YouTube had 1.4 million views. That's impressive. It's pretty good. Trish Stratus has 1.2 million, which is awesome and speaks a lot to Trish's fame. Right. The big takeaway from this is when Rey Mysterio entered... It has 3.5 million views. Wow. So good on you, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> People love Rey Mysterio, apparently. Which, no, that's definitely true. Yeah. I That was... Like, I thought I was excited when the hurricane came out. Mm-hmm. Rey Mysterio coming out. It's on a whole other level. We still don't know if Ray's going to be permanent or not. He should be on the 205 Live tournament. That's what I was just about to say. Who better... He needs to be on Canyon. 205 Live. I mean, who better than... What'd you say? <laughs> than Canyon. Why Canyon? That was his. That used to be his phrase. Who better than Canyon? Was it really? Yeah. It was Why? Like I don't know. But no, who, yeah, who better to bring attention and viewership to 205 than Rey Mysterio? Yeah. Rey Mysterio versus Kalisto is a dream match. That is going to be so damn good. Yeah. Um, should Rey Mysterio versus Ricochet. Oh, my God. Rey Mysterio versus AJ Styles. Mm-hmm. Rey Mysterio versus Kevin Owens. Rey Mysterio as 205 Live champion versus AJ Styles as champion. There you go. 205 Live is important. Yep. 205 Live is super important in that moment. Especially if and when Rey Mysterio wins. 205 Live Championship? Yeah. The Cruiserweight Championship? No, no. <laughs> the the match between AJ Styles. If the 205 Live Champion beats AJ Styles. Right. It's a big deal. Rey Mysterio versus Neville. That He's hopefully be, not yeah. fired. Right. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. I gotta hope Ray's back. We don't know yet. Hopefully we'll know soon. Hopefully. Um, and speaking of legendary performers, Chris Jericho had a great idea on how they improve promos. Oh, yeah. What's this about? So you remember back in the day, well, way back in the day, we had uh, Piper's Pit. Right. We had all these interview segments. We had the highlight reel with Jericho. Right. Uh, what was uh, Carlito's called? Carlito had a show. Um, and The Miz has a show. I don't remember. I don't remember Carlito's. Anyways, he's, well, his point is that you know the reason that these shows exist is that you can take somebody like... Uh, like Aleister Black, for example, call him out and interview him on the show, and it ends up being you know some kind of fight between him and another guy. 
It's a 10-minute segment to get these guys who don't talk to talk. Right. And another thing that he pointed out, or possibly Stone Cold had pointed out in an interview before, the Stone Cold character was not developed in the ring. Right. It was developed at the commentary table. When he Uh would come out and do commentary. And talk shit. Right. I don't know why they don't just let these things happen. Um... I guess the segment itself has to be produced and everything. It, ha- it takes up time. So that is, you know, playing devil's advocate, even a dumb reason. Right. Not to do it. Yeah. But there is no good reason, in my opinion, that they don't allow, and they have, but they, you know, they shouldn't let guys like Kevin Owens, not even Kevin Owens, because his, his character's over. But guys like... You know, maybe EC3 and NXT, who people don't know him yet, let him come out on commentary, talk mm-hmm. some crap. That That's a thing that I I don't know if I'm just misremembering, you know, rose-colored glasses, that kind of thing. But I remember that being more of a thing. That when guys were feuding and they had like an exhibition match, like a squash match, the other guy would come out and do commentary. I know Miz has done it a bunch of times. Yeah, it does seem like that used to happen a lot more. It seems that way, but I, it should happen more. It's like, it's almost like just free practice and you get in front of the crowd. So why not? Other than we need our commentators to be plugging their fucking messages constantly, <laughs> which right. is how it is on the, the main show. Yeah, yeah, make sure this, yep. Yeah. Um,. Which, by the way, Jonathan Coachman joined their commentary team. I I believe Brooks posted that on our Facebook. Oh, really? That's awesome. I miss Coachman. He's an excellent talker. Eh? Eh? I don't think I ever liked him. Oh, that's a shame. He's really good. But yet, I, I wish they would do that more. Chris Jericho, who again, one of the best talkers ever... So it seems like you would know, and then, and you know most people agree with them, and that's what they should do. Um, by the way, Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens, that was a big part of that Kevin Owens 365 show on the network, mm-hmm. which you really should watch. They were also on an episode of uh, the Drive Along. I think yeah, I think it was them. No, it was him and Sammy. Yeah. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And that was excellent. It, Those guys know each other way too well. <laughs> yeah. I'd imagine. And uh, I, I found a pretty funny story here. This is going around Facebook. At Bray Wyatt, or sorry, there was a mom at Walmart looking at uh, action figures, trying to figure out which one to get her kid. And she asked a man, you know, which one should I get? Do you know any of these people, basically? And this man picked up a Bray Wyatt figure and said, this one's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know where this happened. I think when I looked at the person's profile, it was like some other state than Florida. I was going to say probably a Brooksville Walmart. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's pretty freaking fantastic. And I believe even Walmart tweeted about it. That's funny. And, uh, yeah. Oh, speaking of action figures, um, Zack Ryder. Right. I, I don't know who his wife is. But, Not sure. Um, I think she's a rest, indie wrestler or something. I don't, know. I don't know what who she is exactly. But she posted on Twitter that he had her out searching for the, uh, the new Mean Gene Elite figure that came out. Yeah, I believe Zach has, like, every figure or most figures or something. Yeah, I know he's a collector, and apparently Cash is a collector, too, which made me excited. I believe that. And Cash is a bit of a nerd, isn't he? Yeah. And, uh, TJ Perkins just posted pictures of his, uh, non-elite figure that's coming out. And TJ's a nerd for himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I love his Instagram, though. He's always got, like, Star Wars stuff, and he, it's cool. I still really want his elite figure, though. T.J. Perkins? Yeah. Oh, I bet it's a good one. It's freaking cool. He's somebody, like, I think we talked about on the last show, like, thank God we never started buying just the indie guys we like, 
Because at this point, that's just the WWE. <laughs> right. Well, that one I do want because I saw him a long time ago. Yeah. But he was just, he was so little. Cash's Ono figure doesn't exist, right? No. Not yet. Right. I'm sure it will. That Because that's one I'll have to get to. I got to get an Adam Cole, baby, figure when it comes out. Uh, I love Adam Cole. See, I bought a Seth Rollins figure just because, you know, he was Tyler Black when I saw him here. But it's the S.H.I.E.L.D. figure. I'm okay. Like, eh. Yeah, I want the Power Ranger outfit. I saw that the one. The White Ranger outfit. I that saw the white badass. one. That was SummerSlam, right? That sounds right. Yeah, Maybe saw, WrestleMania. Um, it was one of the big was, shows. Yeah, and it was an elite. Oh, the new, his new figure that's coming out, I think is him from WrestleMania with the torch. That would be cool. But it looked a little weird. So I don't know. Maybe it was just the photo I saw. They did a neat behind-the-scenes thing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's all of Jay. <laughs> and that's your report from Riley. <laughs> She's putting the glass in the sink. Uh, but yeah, there's a pretty neat moment of uh, Seth Rollins like testing out that whole thing yeah. on the the WWE 24 for nice. last year's WrestleMania. Uh, I love, I God, I love those behind the scenes things. Mm -hmm. They're great. I know, like for some purists, maybe not so much. Um, I actually I just accidentally watched it again. Like it's been years since I seen it. But the uh, Stone Cold Page interview came on after that, the podcast she did. Mm -hmm. And they do a whole lot of behind the scenes talking. <laughs> uh, like, probably would make you upset. Probably. Just the way they talk about some things. That, like, I don't mind like seeing like production stuff. I think that's cool. They go way past that. I can't uh, remember exactly what it was. They were talking about working. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. To the point where I was even like, Wait, what? Like, why are you saying that? Right. Um, but it was, that's that's still a good podcast. Uh, another thing that's been announced that's maybe big news for us is the Ring of Honor has announced their Honor Club streaming service. Yeah. Which is very exciting. It's nine ninety nine, like every other streaming service. Of course. <laughs> um. And you'll get, like, all the VODs. I don't know when you get pay-per-views. Uh, vast uh, on-demand library. You don't get the pay-per-views necessarily. You get 50% off the pay-per-views when bought digitally. However, you can... And, and it's $100 for the year, $9.99 a month. Or you can pay $120 a year and get the pay-per-views. So if you were going to buy annually, you just get the $20 upgrade anyways. It's kind of weird. Well, $9.99 a month would be, it's 12 months in a year. Yeah, it's $120. Yeah. But you save 20 bucks if you buy the annual thing. Or you can get the VIP annual for 120 So they're, they're, they're trying oh, to set okay. it up so obviously you would just get the VIP one. Right. But that you have to buy at one time. Yes, but from the looks of it at least. And uh, you'll be able to access it on you know Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, all those type of things, obviously, on your computer. Um, I wish there was like a $10 or $15 a month option for the VIP, because then we would definitely watch those pay-per-views. Oh, yeah. But I wonder how long after the pay-per-view is over, because aren't there pay-per-views on like Friday or Thursday or some crap like that? I don't think so. Hmm. We'll have to look into this and wait for them to announce more details. I don't know when it starts. I don't think it says. Um, if you are a ringside member, it automatically rolls into this new thing. I think ringside members got like discounts and access to special videos and stuff like that. Right. So uh, that's exciting. Um, the other streaming service I've thought about getting is the uh, High Spots one. Oh, yeah. I always forget about that one. Yeah, which that one's like cheaper than nine ninety nine, I believe. I think so. All these subscription services are going to have to come down on prices a little bit. Think so? I think so. <clears throat> because you're going to get 
all the different streaming services because they're competing with cable. But by the time you sign up for like five of them, you're back up to, you know, that's your cable bill. Yeah, it's getting to that point. So, I don't think it's going to happen anytime too soon. But, you know, you'll have... You know, you'll have WWE, then, you know, everyone has at least Netflix or Hulu or right. both. And then YouTube Red, that's another $10. Yep. Uh, you know, those $10 add up. And then they do. Ring of Honor is $10. High Spots. I think it's $10 high spots. or less. I think it's like maybe yeah. 6 bucks. So it was, it was like 6 or $7. And then, you know, there are other subscription services that you know we don't necessarily care for but those are out there too and yeah you're you're back up to or more than your care. yeah okay if we sound a little different i apologize it was not recording correctly should be now hey come on program there we go Is all it right working? it was it was working it was just not recording left and right it was recording only on the right so if you're sitting on the left side, hey, we're back. <laughs> hey, this is like uh, this is like Twix. That's right. Now yeah. you're gonna get both sides. There you go. I mean, <laughs> One day I'll I'll figure out how to do these things. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that the thing had like flatlined on one side. So uh, that's a that's a thing I didn't know about. And now I know. Every show will get better. Yep. Till it doesn't. <clears throat> No, it doesn't. <laughs> then we have to do uh, something else. Do something else. We'll have to dive headlong into something we know nothing about. We'll pull O'Brien. Yep. Because that is... <laughs> speaking of which... What's that? Uh, I just saw that uh, DRL tr- tw- tryouts are tonight. What are? Drone Racing League. Oh, I think it's a TRL, like the MTV show. <laughs> That's coming back. Did you hear that? No. Why? Yeah. I... Because some people liked it. I guess I liked it. I was also a dumb kid back then. Well, if you liked it, then... <laughs> what? Then you probably were. Yeah. I don't know, I didn't... Speaking of liking things, segue. <laughs> this is about Facebook. One day I'll also be good at segues. Uh, no, Conor McGregor commented on Ronda Rousey showing up in WWE. I like making segues that don't make any sense. Me too, obviously. Or just, you know, we'll be sitting here and, like, speaking of tire tread, you, you know. <laughs> just. <laughs> no one spoke of tire tread. <laughs> I love doing that. Uh, so, finally, we got word from Conor McGregor, hopefully future WWE superstar, uh, about Ronda showed up in WWE. That never happened. <laughs> I bet it will. People so? didn't say Ronda would ever show up in WWE. Mm-hmm. Uh, he likes money. Yeah. That's why he'll show up. He's like, Mr. Ronda's Krabs. a huge fan. Right. Uh, but he said, and I quote, I am delighted for her. Absolutely over the moon for her. She looked like she really enjoyed herself at the event, and I was very, very happy to see her. She's a pioneer for the game, and she came through it all and faced winds of the... Wins and big, big losses, and she came through it. We were having a hard time because he... Was it written in his accent? No, I just can't read. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and I just flat out refused to, so... That's why you've got the computer. Yep. And then the computer's kind of far away. That's why I can read it. But, uh... Well, that's cool. There's some people that are really upset about Ronda Rousey being in WWE, and I don't get it. The only thing I've noticed... People are upset that she showed up and kind of to yeah. outshine Asuka. Yeah, but at the same time, you could point out that maybe they're trying to show that Ronda is just as important as Asuka. That they wanted them Which both to be center n- stage. not the way it should be. No? I'm not saying that's not true, but I'm just saying that's not the way it should be. Coming from their perspective. Yeah. I don't mind that she showed up. I mean, yes, Asuka won... She had her moment, and it wasn't stolen because the show goes on. Yeah. I mean, yes, you could have, you know, drug out the moment of Oscar winning. You could have kept showing, you know, recaps of her, 
you know, next couple of weeks on the weekly show. Raw, I think. I don't know what show she's I on. I think we still don't know who she's going to be facing. I'm assuming it's a SmackDown Women's Champion. Is our next story? Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think it was a big deal. Uh, the only thing I didn't... I wasn't too thrilled with was the the jacket. Why? Because the jacket was like 18 sizes too big. But then later on, after we recorded the show, I found out, I read an article that I don't know if it was true or not, but someone said that that was uh, Roddy Piper's jacket and his son gave it to her. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, so if that's true, that's badass. And I take back everything I said. Yeah. About the jacket being dumb. I like that her gimmick is that she's a rowdy, pipe, rowdy Roddy I'm Piper fan. I'm We're recording a show. And I'm hand-gliding. You're hand-gliding? <laughs> I don't know how to hand-glide. Well, you know what? <laughs> That's pretty obvious. <laughs> I am. I actually don't either. I don't think anyone does. Well, I know what I'm diving into next. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about Ronda being in WWE. I'm excited for what she's going to do at WrestleMania. I would love to see her versus Asuka. Isn't that kind of what that led into somehow? Well, it'll probably be Asuka versus the women's champion. And then it'll be Ronda versus someone. It should be Ronda versus Charlotte. the three of them. Yeah. Maybe. Probably should be because Ronda's face is probably going to be on the billboard. Mm-hmm. So it probably should be against the champion of some kind. Um, I'm also excited for Shayna Baszler to get pulled up to the main roster. We get Shayna versus Ronda. You think we're going to get them versus each other right away? Hell yeah! You don't think the other two are going to be just kind of around all of a sudden? And you're going to get the four horsewomen? That would be cool too. Because they are already they already pushed that. We were, oh yeah, we might I guess we might get the four horsewomen versus uh, the four horsewomen of the MMA versus the four horsewomen of WWE at WrestleMania. That would be incredible as well. Mm-hmm. So I I'm pretty much game for any of this. But it seemed like one of the four horsewomen of the MMA they tried to kind of keep her off camera through most of it. Which one? I don't remember. But I just remember there was one of them like. She was always kind of either in the back or like not fully in frame or just hmm. not there at all. Or... I'm not sure. We'll see. Yeah. Um, and then to cap off the show, you know, it's crazy to me how much we talk about women's wrestling now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, That's true. Obviously, the women's revolution worked. Yeah. Which it's so fucking cool to see that. It's so cool to be like. I feel like we're an end game now. Like, it's just going to keep getting better. Mm-hmm. But we're going to get the first ever women's elimination chamber match. It's going to be oh, Alexa yeah. Bliss defending her championship against five other women. And it's probably going to be people from this list. It's probably going to be uh, Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax versus Bailey versus Sasha Banks, Sonya Deville, and Mandy Rose. Okay. Some combination of those people. Uh, why is Paige not on that list? Isn't she done? Oh, she might be. That's right. You're right. Yeah, I thought she retired. I think she's being forced to retire, yeah. So I would love to see Bliss, Jax, Bailey, Banks. Hold on, let's see. Bliss, Jax, Bailey, Banks... You, no, I don't... Bill, you, okay, yeah. You shouldn't even be allowed to say Banks right now. After all the gifts me and Brooks have sent you from that... The Rumble. I don't know. Apparently I don't pay attention uh, to your messages. Oh, man, yeah. We are so... Like, so bad. Like, she, she's just so bad. What did you send me? I don't know. Oh, I know it was the... I sent you one the next day of her uh, kicking, I think, Trish? No, Lita. In the corner. And... Yeah, you need to find that because that one's really funny. And I don't know if it was from the Rumble or the... Like, the next night. But she went to do a... 
uh, well, obviously not the Rumble, but she went to do a, uh, through the second, the third rope. Okay. Oh, to that. the outside. Where she killed herself. She, yeah. Well, that was on purpose. She, had to, she gave herself a pile driver on purpose. Well, I think McFoley told her not to do it. Is what I saw. What? Yeah. Well, that's the news I saw going around that she planned on doing it and Mick Foley told her not to or he didn't want her to. So she did it and landed on the top Daddy. of her head? Yeah, did you see oh, how brutal it looks? My hand got lighted. That messed up my hair. I would assume it would. <laughs> Why don't you go get me a brush and I'll fix it? No, I just like it like that. Okay, that's fine. There's <clears throat> a report from Riley. Hey, lighting messed up her hair. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, she apparently did the... We're talking about it, didn't aren't we? Yeah. Crazy spot. Because she messed up. Like, no part of that was on purpose. Supposedly it was, or maybe they're just trying to spin it that way. How and why would you do that on purpose? Because it was crazy looking. She landed it right on top of her head. Yeah. Outside of the ring. Yeah. People have done crazier. And to think, we used to think that uh, Cactus Jack doing the elbow drop off the apron onto the floor was the craziest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's the show for this week, guys. Did you have anything else to add? Uh, nope. I don't think so. All right. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, next week we'll have Brooks back. Hopefully. Yeah, we should. Sure. I'm sure we will. And uh, thank you for listening. You can get this show on iTunes. You can get it on YouTube. You can get it on our website. That's Future Villains, F E W T R U E V I L L A I N S dot com. You can find me on Twitter at Best in the Realm. You can find our our page also on uh, Twitter at Future Villains. You can also find our page at Future Villains. Should have brought that stuff up first. Mm -mm. Me on Twitter at Best in the Realm. Me on Facebook, Best in the Realm Gaming. Uh, best in the Realm.com. I forgot I own that. <laughs> oh. Just takes you back to our website. Uh, and where can they find you? Uh, on Twitter at Brian25 or on Instagram, Brian1138. All right. Well, thank you for listening, guys. Let's stop. Let's stop.